Welcome to the Pro Kitchen Countertop Designer video tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at the new Countertop Designer module in Pro Kitchen. We developed this module to create a very, very easy way for you to create countertop sheets to go to your countertop fabricators with all the dimensions, all the edge profiles, all the backsplash, everything showing on it just the way you'd like it. So to get started here, I've got a design open already. Now this is just a basic design with just some base cabinets and a little island that we can put a fun little island top on just to give us a basic exercise on how to use the designer. Now we can go in and we can create our countertops with our countertop button and those will import into the, the designer or we can just do it all from designer. So let's open up the designer and let's take a look at what we got going on. And you notice the icon over here for the designer. So, we'll just run through all of our little controls up here first in all of our tabs and see what we've got. Of course, we've got new design, we've got delete design, we've got zoom to fit, zoom in, zoom out, and our counter, or our um, select tool for our mouse. Then we've got shapes. Now, auto-generate speaks for itself. It generates automatically from the cabinets you have in your layout, but you don't always have all the cabinets that you need on there. In our case, we have an island we need to do something with, so... For our island, we'll use an L shape. We have a myriad of shapes available up here to use. Even got mitered ends so that you can use it on uh, things like post form and, and whatnot. Corners, a whole bunch of different corner options to choose from. Segments, segments basically these are items that you can add to a countertop, be at the end of a countertop, like this one to give you an arc, or an inset arc along a side. You know, you can cut in if you need to all sorts of fun stuff in segments more than you'll probably ever use cutouts we can add cutouts of course edge profiles lots of edge profiles to put on material got a couple materials selected already in here and we'll go through how you go and select your own materials you can even import your own images into here so that's pretty cool if you're doing something like a concrete countertop or something that's a very custom color. You can come in and take a photo of it and import it in. CNC radius, we can add CNC to ends and corners and stuff like that. European miters, we're not in Europe, but hey, you never know, you might need one. Backsplash, we can add backsplash. We can put in sinks and appliances. We've got a nice bill of materials that shows us everything that's in it. We've got a report that you can print off and send to your dealer or your fabricator and we've got a summary. So to get started we'll click on shapes. We're going to auto generate the majority of our tops here just by simply clicking the auto generate button. Again it does the exact same thing as countertop placement button over here. The only difference is if we minimize that it didn't place them out here when it did it. So come back and grab it. Here we go. Okay, so now we're going to start with our corner. So we're going to go to L shape. I'm going to drop an L shape out here. Now, if it's the wrong direction, just like in Pro Kitchen, if we need to rotate this before I drop it, simply right click and you're in rotate mode. So I right clicked it, rotated it 180 degrees, and I'm dropping it with a left click. I'm going to click back on it so I have it to highlight. Now, you can either click on it here or you can click on it up here to highlight your items to work on. And this works throughout whether you're working with backsplash or edge profiles or corners all you gotta do is select it under the elements tab or um, window and place it. So we're gonna change the size on this because that is definitely not gonna fit on top of the little wall that I've got out there. We've got 75, we're gonna make it 18 inches deep. I'm going to make this other leg um, 45 inches long but I'm only going to make it 12 inches deep because we're going to have a little more fun out there. And click off of it. You always have to click out of the field to make it place. We can name this. I am going to name this Island Top. So here's our Island Top complete with skew. And I want to come back here and I want to do a zoom to fit. So it's back over here on my screen. I want to highlight it. And now I can drag it, and I'm just going to get it up over here so it's a little closer, not quite so spread out. Okay, now for this guy, 
and come in. Normally I'd place my corners now, but I want to finish my island top. I want to get the general shape of it because this is not quite done. So I'm going to add an arc to the end of it here. As you can see, as I bring this arc out here, we can see where it's going to place. Pretty simple. And I'm dropping it here. Now we can change this arc. Whatever size we want to make it. Let's say 36 inches long. Um, I want to make it a little bit deeper at 12 inches. And we click off of here. Here we've got a 36 by 12 inch arc. Now I can change this if I want this offset from the left. Let me do that. I can make it, you know, six inches from the right. But in this case, I just want it to be centered. Center. There we go. Nice centered arc out here. Okay, back to our corners. Now that we're done playing with that. Corner radius, you can see we're already set up to have a 3 inch corner radius, but that might be just a little bit big. So I'm going to change that to 1.5 for most of my corners here. And I'm just going to come out here. If you notice, my corner is now turned red. So everywhere that little corner point turns red, click your mouse. And if you placed one, I have a stove in here if we look back on my layout. So I really don't want those. So when you highlight them red again, come on click and they are supposed to go away. If they're not going away, you can come over here and see we point to it. I mean that's pretty cool. And just hit delete on your keyboard and that one's gone. Corner number two, delete. Get rid of those silly things. And I gotta come select it again and drop another one here. Now my island, I want a little bit bigger ones on my island. So I'm gonna change this back to three. And three and three and you notice how it's a little easier to see our corners when they're three inches and they're not an inch and a half inner radius I'm going to place a couple inner radiuses because this is going to be you know solid surface top or, or granite top or something that we can put a radius on kind of hard to do that on a square edge laminate top or a bevel edge laminate top rather and I need one more 1.5 inch corner for my little corner out here Okay, so we've gone segments. We drop a cutout. We don't really have a cutout in this. We'll drop one just to play with it. We can come in here and we can change the size of it. Let's say we want a, yeah, let's go six inch. We'll have it really roundy cornered. And 30 by 21, that's your average sink size, give or take. So now you'll notice as I place it out here, I've got a green dot that goes from one side to the other. Now that green dot is going to indicate which line the front of the cutout will be tied to. Not really too big of a deal when you're dealing with a cutout, but wait till you get to sinks. You'll need it then. So here we go. I can change this again. I can make this, say, 25 inches from my left. We can offset to center or edge. We can change the size of it again. And there's my little cutout. Don't need one, so I'm going to delete it edge profiles. We can come and set our edge profile in here now. Um, we'll do the pencil edge just for fun. And now you can see we've got the green lines out here. It's already set our edge profile on that green line. So I just got to come fill in the rest of the green lines including the corners. Now this is going to be funny because this line's not going to turn green until I set it. But you notice I got little green corners top and bottom up here and a little dotty line. That indicates that it's going to do that end. So just click. There we go. Here we're coming up. This would be a backsplash piece, so I don't need an edge profile there. But I do need an edge profile here. And I need an edge profile here. And now you might notice that my corner's not there yet. So we got to get out. An inch and a half corner is kind of hard to select. Got to get right into that corner. And a single click places that edge profile. And again, got to get this little edge. And this one, and corner edge. See that three inch edge? That was much easier to place. But you see your little dots there, so you know when. Straight edge. I want straight edges here because I've got a stove them on it. And I want a straight edge here because it goes up against my refrigerator. I could do a straight edge here and here, but I've got backsplash, so I don't really need it. I don't have backsplash yet, but I will. In fact, we may just as well go ahead and do backsplash while we're here. Add splash. Follow the highlights. Pretty, pretty easy to uh, 
get all this one worked out. Now, you'll notice I've added splash, and if you just hit escape, that goes away. But I've added splash to these ends, but I also have a radius on them. So if I've got an inch and a half radius and a 25 inch backsplash, which is what it placed, do the math, it ain't going to work. So I simply have to come in here, highlight my splash, and I can highlight it from here, or I can highlight it from here, because I have it same on this one. So highlight it. I'm just going to cut this down to 24.5 inches. Not quite going to be enough. 23.5 inches for an inch and a half backsplash. There we go. And you'll notice if you look really close that it moved it from the wall instead of from the front end. No big deal. And it's going to move it depending on where your little green dot is. You know, if I when I first selected this, I believe the green dot was in the back. So, but because it's in the front, it moved it toward the front. But we can swap that with our right left. See how cool that is? We can change the offset if we need to. We can change the height, the depth, all that good stuff. But we don't need to. It's good where it is. So here we go, another 23 and a halfer. 23.5, and there we've got that guy. So now pretty much we've got all of our splash set. Did I miss one? Backsplash number one. I did miss a backsplash. Oh, I, I know. I was. I did it. It didn't happen by itself. It was me. Okay, backsplash. Let's see. Um, let's jump back here to our material. So here's our nice little counters, and this is pretty much, except for the blue highlighting and you know stuff, it's pretty much the same as you'd see inside a Pro Kitchen. But we can set our material to it. So I'm going to add a new material. I'm going to add this one as, let's say, laminate number two. Okay. Okay, I got laminate number two. Now, if I click on my stone here, there's still no, there's no image. So there's no, it doesn't know. So I've got to go select something. So here I'm going to click on select. Put my box up over here so everybody can see it. And let's see, I did say laminate, didn't I? So flooring, stone, fabrics, what I, oops, laminate, here we go. Laminate, let's just pick a pretty blue one so it stands out. Everybody knows what we've just done. Okay, so pretty blue. I can name it here if I want to. I can put pretty blue. And maybe it's not that pretty of a blue, but you know, whatever. And let's see, what about maybe 38 bucks a foot? For price, I can change the thickness if I want to. But here's really cool: we've got units down here, and this is pricing units. So I can price it by the inch, by the foot, by the square inch, or by the square foot. And I'm thinking for a laminate top, probably about 38 bucks a foot is probably a fairly decent price. Maybe not. I haven't sold countertops in a while. And then you click apply, so it sticks up here. Now. When you, once you've clicked apply and you've got crosshairs, you click on your top out here and it's going to change it. Don't want blue? Okay. Not blue. Now I'm going to zoom in a little bit here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. A little bit more. And let's see if I can do a different color. Maybe this will show up a little bit better. There we go. Okay, with this lighter color, you can see our backsplash around here. And now our backsplash and our countertop are all the same color really cool. doesn't have to be. I know when I was selling countertops, one of the popular things that we did is we did laminate countertops, and then we did a solid surface edging and a solid surface backsplash. Now, while we can't show a different edging color yet in Pro Kitchen, I can show a different backsplash color. Just by simply going up and clicking on it. Set all my backsplashes to the color I want them. Okay, and now we can come in and put our laminate color in. Laminate color. And let's see, I've got I've got a reddish brown color going on, I've got a green color, and then I've got this. It doesn't really fit, so I better swap that over to there. There we go. Now it all looks nice. CNC radius, if we want to add a CNC radius, you click on it, you put the size in, you select where you want it to be, which corner, and it'll slap in a radius for you. 
and you can add to all corners you can delete all corners whatever European miter if you're doing a uh, a uh, post form top European miter I know some places still use that backsplash we've already added all of our backsplash we've gone through there sinks let's go add us a sink okay center up there add sink select sink that one looks all right place now again pay attention to our little green dot remember green means front and you can try to drag it down here because my sinks here in the middle when you try to drag it they ain't gonna have any part of that it's gonna want to snap where it wants to snap toward one end and so we're just gonna drop this little guy right there and now we can come in and we can place it precisely and if we minimize we can come back to our layout and we see we've got 36 24 and then a 36 inch sink so it'll be 18 inches in there okay so we've got our sink so we've got 36 we've got 24 we've got 18 we've got an inch and a half overhang if we do the math 36 and 24 and 18 an inch and a half 79.5 inches so pull back up our countertop designer which we had minimized we come over here we put in 79.5 now I can set this to the left or to the right now you notice it's at 79.5 to the edge but if I got an offset to center click that little button pulls it right back down to center um, I could change it I could set it back from the edge a little bit by changing my offset here but we just want to leave it at one inch and I can change what it's going to look like whether I want it to be drop in undermount or integral and we'll just do an undermount for this and again I've clicked out here so it's taken me out of the edit mode but if I want to get back in just simply click up there or on the item okay appliances we can add an appliance we don't need one but we'll just play with one here let's get this guy out here now again remember your little green dot in this case I'm gonna forget my little green dot exists and I'm accidentally on purpose gonna place this to the back just so you can see how it looks placed in the back you can see our controls are in the back and our um, vent is in the front for this little downdraft cannot rotate it you can't turn it if you if you accidentally do this well it's still lit up like this hit delete on your keyboard go grab another one put it in proper okay so here's my basic countertop I've got everything done I've got backsplashes on it I've got everything in there I've got edge profiles I've got segments I've got all sorts of fun stuff in here so we're about done with this guy I'm gonna click on our bill of materials you notice over here we've got price list and elements I've put some price lists in here pretty much I just numbered them we've got 37 elements in here you can play with to put your price in just click on it add your price you can choose on a lot of them whether it's well, depending on what it is there we go segment angled you can do this each inch foot eight foot ten foot so you've got a lot of options in here um, if by some chance we miss some options it happens just let us know we'll get it added to a pro kitchen update so here's our bill of materials we can come down here and we can see that we are looking at about forty six hundred dollars for this countertop go to our report gotta refresh our report a little bit here there we go here's our nice report um, gives you a list gives you a breakout radius three radius one what the edge profiles are on all this great stuff shows you our edge profile down here so it makes it really easy to come in set these puts name in here even you know who it is all right and of course you've got all these options up here that you can play with but we're not going to print these because that doesn't do you any good so we're just going to go to summary and again here's our summary of everything now if you recall these three countertops auto placed they auto generated this one we did by hand obviously this one is not in the proper space so I want to position this guy manually on my plan now place all if we place all it's going to put them all out there and it's going to put this guy offset just like this on my plan I'm going to click on it to highlight so it knows that I'm working with it as you can see as you click on these guys they highlight
here we go and countertop we're just going to go ahead and we are going to manually position click on it here it goes drag it right out here just like every just like a regular top that we were moving around get it in place and there it snaps back over here now I can come up and hit place all place all please place all of them okay and we are basically done in here so now that our summary is up we can just simply close Pro Kitchen countertop designer and here's here's our countertops just like we planned them all the way out through here let's see zoom to fit get a little bit closer a little tighter now one thing we haven't done yet is this countertop is placed. It places all your countertops at 34 and a half inches. So we need to do a little up down over here for this guy because there's walls sticking up through it. We want 40 and a half. There we go. Now the moment of truth. Create a 3D. And here's our 3D. Whoops, wrong button. Give a little rotate on it here. looks like I need to adjust the backsplash a little bit so let's just see how easy that might be we'll close it okay so we got to open our Pro Kitchen countertop designer again and find our backsplashes okay here we go this one really should come all the way across through here so let's highlight this backsplash and delete and had I been paying attention, I would have, you know, remembered that measurement. <clears throat> it should be, it should be 60 inches because it's two base 30 sitting there. So we want to highlight this one now. And I can change the size of it. So I've got currently 51 inches. I need 51 inches plus 30 inch opening for the range plus 60 inches for the backsplash and that comes to 141 inches so let's change this to 141 and place it all the way across out there and actually let's go 140 there we go that way and I, I, I dropped it an inch let's pull it back up there I dropped an inch because if you look up here it's actually sticking out toward you know on the end of the backsplash there so I dropped it an inch. It's all going to line up just right now. Um, again, if we needed, if we were offset from the wrong end, we could have changed that, but we're not. So we'll just leave it like it is. And now, this is one thing that gets me every, every, every time. It doesn't matter how many times I play with this countertop designer. This one gets me when you come back in and do a little remodel like we've just done. When you go in and fix something, when you come back, you must place all, or it ain't going to take effect on your layout. So here we go. I placed it all. You see my backsplash going across there. I did notice one other thing here in this guy, and he's a little short. I need to make him, I think that will do it. And 3D again. And here we go. Isn't that just the neatest thing you ever saw? So, there we go. Countertop designer. And again, you can go back in. You can change your edge profiles on all this stuff. You can change the colors on everything. You know, you can move items, replace items. So easy to go in and just play with countertops and you know it's a lot easier than coming in and uh, you know right clicking on your top and choosing from the menu and doing this and doing that like we used to have to edit tops now mind you if you need to edit a countertop if you don't like this guy anymore you can just click on it and hit delete when you do that it takes it off of your counter designer too so if you delete it from here it deletes from counter designer however if you delete from counter designer if you do not click um, update on it from your summary 
or place all. If you don't click place all, it will not change on your layout. So you got to remember that because it, it is one thing that gets me. So, well, here we've had we spent just about a half hour here, and we've delved into the countertop designer pretty well I think I think this should uh, get most people's questions answered and and it's really easy to play with um, you just you know once you sit down with it you play with a few things and hey you know if it doesn't work let me know and uh, but if you need any other things added to it or anything again let us know we'll be glad to uh, improve as per customer requests so anyways this has been the pro kitchen countertop designer video tutorial I hope you've enjoyed it have a great day thank you